Greetings and salutations, everybody. I'm back as uh, I'm going to go into another entry here in Elvira's Movie Macabre from when she had kind of relaunched that uh, series back in 2010, 2011, and uh, in the Coffin Collection that I'd picked up, which has 28 films in it. And sorry, I've been kind of light on everything this week, as you might be able to tell in my voice, as I'm going to continually be clearing my throat, I had caught a, quite a bug that really took me down for the count. And I'm just now kind of well enough to go ahead and do another video. So anyways, as I've been working my way through this set of 28 films, as I said, I've now come to film number four, which is where she presents The Werewolf of Washington from 1973, which stars Dean Stockwell, who you may know from Dune, Quantum Leap, and Blue Velvet, among various other works. And the synopsis for this film is as follows. A reporter who has had an affair with the daughter of the U.S. president is sent to Hungary. There he is bitten by a werewolf and then gets transferred back to Washington where he gets a job as a press assistant to the president. Then bodies start turning up in D.C. If that sounds ludicrous, it's just because it is. Um, I'd never seen this film before, much less heard of it, and it has a rating of 4 out of 10 on IMDb and for good reason. So this film is definitely cheese upon cheese. You know, this is one of those cheesy ones in the collection that I knew I was going to be coming across and was going to have a lot of fun with. Everything about this film is definitely absurd, yet somehow it still kind of tries to take itself a bit seriously, um, at least in my opinion. Um, though it moves along at a nice pace still, which, you know, gets you right into this werewolf attack early on. And that wolf being basically a little black doggy, doesn't look very uh, ferocious, and um, it's set against a very dark background. Very dark, which is a theme that is constantly happening in the way that this film was shot, the way that this lighting is, um, which comes over and over throughout the film. You get these very dark scenes that are hard to see. Elvira even pokes fun at it at, at one point at least, where she's kind of poking into a little pop-in bubble with a little flashlight trying to see what's going on. So things are dark. Hard to see, and not very scary, of course, yet even that uh, initial narration by Stockwell comes across as very somber and dramatic, like we're supposed to take it seriously, which clashes with how this film actually turned out. Now, when it comes to the werewolf transformation, um, it definitely leaves much to be desired, um, but at least they did have a nice attempt at this transition, which I wonder if, you know, at the time, considering this was pre, you know, classic like an American Werewolf in London, if this was actually considered, you know, a good transformation scene for what they had at the time. But there are so many scenes where he's well lit, um, kind of out in the open, and looks just like somebody in a costume for Halloween, which kind of makes it a bit laughable, actually very laughable, as, you know, the premise itself, you know, revolves around these killings taking place in and around D.C., and, uh, you know, area and local, uh, you know, law enforcement is trying to investigate and find out what's happening and deal with the situation while politicians are trying to spin the story of these attacks in different ways. Yet he looks like a man in a costume running around, kind of having fun. So this definitely ends up playing much more like a comedy, even though it seems very unintentional that it's that way. Because it's trying to take itself too seriously, as, you know, the film is very laughable. Obviously, you know, this is a pretty funny B-movie, uh, something you can put on and kind of just have fun poking fun at. And it's a really good uh, addition to this collection, um, because it seems so unintentional. And I am glad, you know, of course, that in later years, Stockwell really did have a very nice career after this one. And I often wonder if this was one of his earlier works that maybe he was a little bit embarrassed, you know, some of those earlier attempts at fame that really came across cheesy. But <clears throat> as for the Elvira portion and her presentation, um, she, as expected, leaned into the political aspects quite a bit in her intro, outro, commercial breaks, and little skits here and there were all about her running for office. You know, she plays that she's um, running for office and mentions, you know, warming her globes and um, pokes fun at many campaign slogans that were very popular at the time. So remember, this is around 2010, 2011, um, and even a lot of them, you know, in the years leading up to them. So she definitely pokes fun at both sides and just politicians in general. She even uh, dresses up uh, during one of the parts where she's definitely doing this strong riff on Sarah Palin, you know, which includes her holding this shotgun and stating that she can see Transylvania from there. But, um, you know, she really keeps this going at all points throughout while also having those little bubble pop-ins during the film, um, staying in on the political portion of the story while also poking fun at how dark the lighting is and how cheesy the effects is and just how absurd the story is altogether. Um, there is actually a lot to like in that presentation. You know, it's not as slow as the previous one, The Satanic Rites of Dracula, and not as outright bad and painful to watch as I Eat Your Flesh, but it's a nice in-the-middle presentation which was more than worth checking out. 
And speaking of checking out, thanks for checking out this quick little entry here for The Werewolf of Washington from 1973, as presented by Elvira during her movie Macabre from 2010-2011. And, um, you know, we've got 24 more films to go in this collection. And uh, so just be sure to subscribe, you know, as you see that, so you, that way you can see those as they are released. I will also be catching up on some lost time from this week from being sick with another 80s throwback coming right, right around the corner, as well as continuing with the next installment on the Omen franchise. So those are just around the corner. Hopefully I'll have those up next week. And um, on top of all that, I'm also looking into some additional formats for videos that I want to put out there as well. So be sure to subscribe and keep on coming by. And of course, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next one.